Gormi Ogat Kankorja. I rise to speak on yesterday's decision by the British Government not to hold a full public inquiry into the murder of human rights lawyer Pat Finucan. And in doing so, I want to start off by paying tribute to the resilience and courage and indeed dignity of Geraldine Finucan and the Finucan family in their 31 year campaign for the truth about Pat's killing. I am also conscious that when such events and stories hit the news headlines, that many victims out there reflect on the loss of their loved ones, and many victims also seek justice for their loved ones. But what makes Pat Finucane's case stand out? What makes Pat Finucane's case stand out is this. There have been several investigations into his murder, and most of them, and indeed the most high-profile ones of those, have concluded and the British Prime Minister, or then British Prime Minister, stated there was high levels of collusion by the state in his murder. And what does that mean? That means those who were tasked with, first of all, protecting Pat Van Nuken and his family were involved in his murder. And those who were tasked with investigating the murder of Pat Van Nuken were involved in his murder. So how can those who were tasked with protecting him and failed him, and those who were tasked with investigating his murder but were involved in his murder, in any real terms investigate his murder? Hence the reason for a full need for a full public inquiry into his murder. And indeed, the British government in 2001 committed to an inquiry into his murder. Such were the levels of concern around the conclusion in this case. So those who say, and some say it in, in a dignified manner, others are just brutally ignorant in their response to it. Those who say that there's other victims out there are quite correct. But what stands out about Pat's case? The state was involved in his murder. So in what other circumstances would this house divide or would this house say, well, perhaps the British government are correct. There shouldn't be an inquiry. The allegation sits, the facts sit. The state was involved in the murder of a solicitor in this society. That should concern everyone in this house, regardless of your political allegiance, regardless of your views on the conflict of the past. The state, the people who told us they were protecting us, the security forces who told us they were there for our security, plotted, planned and carried out the murder of a solicitor. Members, time is up now. The state has now refused to carry out an inquiry into that. I believe the state has a duty to carry out an inquiry into that. I call Paul Given. Uh, of course, the murder of Pat Finucane was wrong, and I acknowledge uh, the barbaric nature of it, murdered in front of his family. One can only imagine the trauma that that has caused. Uh, and to this day clearly evident 31 years later. That pain is felt by thousands of people right across Northern Ireland. I think of Le Mans, I think of Bloody Friday, I think of Enniskillen, Narrow Water, and the list goes on of thousands of people that suffer as a result of the terrorist campaign for over 30 years in this country. Many of those families have had but a mere desktop exercise carried out by the HET. And when I think of the Finucane investigations, I think of Lord Stevens, Justice Peter Corey, Sir Desmond de Silva. I think of an inquiry that was rejected, that was going to be set up under the 2005 Inquiries Act. And I also think of the criminal conviction that was secured in the murder of Pat Finucane that attracted a 22-year custodial sentence. For thousands of victims of terrorism, they could only but wish for the same level of interrogation that has taken place for the murder of their loved ones. Victims have heard loudly the special status being afforded to the Finucane family by a range of political parties in this House and indeed by other 
international political figures. And when I think of those international obligations, I think of the Smithic Tribunal that found the collusion of Angarda Shikona officers with the provisional IRA in the murder of Harry Breen and Tom Buchanan and Bob, Bu and Bob Buchanan. Where's the public inquiry into that collusion of the state? I think of the safe haven afforded to Republican terrorism by the Republic of Ireland for decades. Where's the public inquiry into the actions of the Republic of Ireland? I think of the evidence to that tribunal of the provisional IRA and the lack of engagement and evidence provided. I think of members of Sinn Féin who have taken their criminal acts to the grave and denied truth and justice to the victims of IRA terrorism. I think of the United States of America and the financing and arming of the provisional IRA. Where is the congressional inquiry into those activities? And so, yes, everyone ought to be treated equally. Everybody ought to have truth and justice. When are we going to see it from all of the other actors of the terrorist campaign that took place for 30 years? And I call Jim Allister. The murder of Fat, Fat Finucan was terrorist, brutal, and extremely shocking. Just like over 3,000 other murders. And yet, when we compare and contrast the attention and the demands in respect of those, we look at the Finucan case. It's had Western Park. It's had the Corian Party. It had Silvio. It had the offer of a public inquiry. It had legislation specially drafted to deliver it. It had a criminal trial uh, 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 and a conviction. And when I contrast that with all the rest, the deficit is staggering. Compare that with those burned alive in Le Mans, those who smothered under the rubble of an escalant, those butchered at King's Mills. We want to talk about collusion, collusion, Mr. Speaker. Then we need to talk about all the collusion. And that would include the collusion of some who have sat on benches in this House, who were leaders of the IRA, who doubtless colluded in multiple murders. What did Martin McGuinness know about the Inniskillen bombing? What did he know about the murder of Pat Gillespie? What did he know about countless other murders? So if you want to talk about collusion, then talk about it across the board. If there are those who colluded, then it's not a one-way street. Anyone involved in criminality deserves the rigours of the law. No exemptions, either for Sinn Féin or anyone else. And that should be the starting principle. But, of course, what we have is a hierarchy, a Finucane elite, who think that they can demand what no one else gets, even when offered a public inquiry. No, we need an international judicial inquiry. Such is the elitism uh, attaching to this matter. And of course, the bottom line is it's all about insatiability. They are insatiable. They will never be satisfied. They wouldn't even be satisfied with a public inquiry unless they got to write the outcome of it. That's the, that's the plain truth. And it's quite clear when they dismiss the very ideas of prosecutions, they're not interested in justice. They're interested in maximizing the rewrite of history. And that is why, of course, this continues to be a boil that needs to be lanced and should have been properly Mamers lanced yesterday up. by the refusal at any stage Mamers of a public inquiry. Thank you. And I call Dolores Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I welcome the opportunity to speak in this uh, matter of the day. And as a young child growing up, uh, Mr. Speaker, I was always taught that two wrongs never made a right. So it is a very unseemly debate uh, that we are 
turning the murder of one person into a, a green and orange issue. We should all be concerned in this House about finding truth and justice for all victims, regardless of who the perpetrators were. And it is uh, astonishing uh, that some members of this House would hold the British government and its agents to the same standards of terrorist organisations. Surely uh, we should all be expecting the government uh, to have a higher standard uh, than any other and to protect all its citizens. It is a fact uh, that Pat Finucane, his murder was uh, uh, or supported by elements uh, within the British uh, establishment. And I think they call for the inquiry and I find it very disingenuous of people to say that they were offered a public inquiry when members of this House know that the 2005 Act was quickly uh, brought into legislation to give the Secretary of State undue influence in terms of interference in any public inquiry and the matters and the facts that might be brought before independent, uh, an independent uh, inquiry tribunal. So, you know, st stop messing about. Today and last night, we saw how the British government treats the widows and children of uh, murdered victims here in the North, treats them with disdain, cancelling a meeting with 10 minutes notice that it, they had waited almost two years to have was pretty damning of the British government. And all victims deserve truth and justice. All families deserve to know what happened to their loved one. And the SDLP has always stood four square with all of those victims. And I pay tribute to Geraldine Finucane and her family and to all other families who have had to carry this burden from the day and hour that their loved one was murdered. I'm always in awe of the determination and how their life has been put on hold in their search for truth and justice. And it doesn't end with the, the partner or the, the child of the family affected. It's transgenerational in nature. And if we are to build reconciliation in this society, then we must deal properly with legacy. The British government failed miserably yesterday. Not only did they fail the Finucane family, they failed all families in their search for truth and justice and dealing with the legacy of our troubled past. Because that was a very clear message that we're not going to get the truth and justice and the legacy institutions that families deserve and need. Members thank you, Mr. Thank Speaker. Thank you. And I call Doug Beatty. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I have to start by condemning uh, the callous, brutal murder uh, of Pat Finucane. Uh, it is truly uh, a stain uh, on our shared past. Uh, this should be a sombre matter of the day. It should not be used as an opportunity to hurl insults uh, across uh, the room. It should not be used as an opportunity to use victims to score political points. There's no winners and losers here. We have hundreds, if not thousands, of victims right across the United Kingdom and Ireland and further afield who are still waiting on truth and justice, including my own family. And nobody is looking at their case. Nobody is promoting the small man here, the one that was murdered and long forgotten, whose name doesn't slip off your tongue at any stage. We have failed victims. Every single one of us in this room have failed victims. The Westminster government has failed victims. The Irish government has failed victims. We did not consult, we did not speak to, we did not get them to join us when we tried to come up with a legacy mechanism that they do not support. And that is why the Stormont House Agreement is failing. It's because the victims do not support it. And there will be many that scream at me and say, well, you're saying that because you're a unionist. And I will throw back at you that there's a bloody Sunday's family member who also does not support the Stormont House Agreement legacy mechanisms. Go to her and tell her she's wrong. We need to come together. 
We need to come up with something that works, and it must be victim-centred. And to be victim-centred, it must include the victims. We cannot do legacy one public inquiry at a time. And victims from right across this country, right across these islands, are looking at us and saying, when will somebody help me get justice and truth for my family member? And the reality is, nobody's even talking about them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, and I call John Blair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker. It should go without saying that it's a sad set of circumstances that brings us here today, but probably worth repeating that um, in order to bring balance and measure to, to the discussion. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the announcement yesterday evening by the Secretary of State appears to, to some of us at least to be further foot dragging yet another uh, diversion from discovery of the facts. The failure of the UK government to establish a public inquiry into the murder of Pat Van Lucan falls short of a Supreme Court ruling which required an Article 2 compliant investigation. It also, of course, is a failure which brings delay to the Finucane family who have shown great dignity in their pursuit of an outcome. To Geraldine Finucane and, and her family, we can only say today, again, in initial reaction, that we share the frustration and offer our sympathy. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the frustration and anger at this decision of the UK Government will also be shared more widely. And this is because it is very difficult to see how this outcome can be regarded as in any way com consistent with the 2019 ruling from the UK Supreme Court. We see here today that the announcement yesterday is very unlikely to be the end of the matter, and the family, with others, will continue their campaign for truth. The UK Government has already accepted that collusion was apparent in this case. They have done so again. They have apologised again. This foot dragging, as I've called it, around the decision leading directly to an Article 2 compliant investigation suggests institutional resistance to the full discovery of the facts. This further delay with talk of review upon review, a legacy review, an ombudsman review, a policing review, adds yet further elements to a process which is now decades old. We could refer to those further processes or reviews bringing their own resource issues or demands. We could guess as to the additional time this will take and the additional stress that this will bring. But there are other more relevant factors in all of this. There remains in place the existing Supreme Court ruling. There remains, more importantly, the needs of victims. Mr Speaker, we have had a stark reminder in the past 24 hours of government outcomes falling far short of the needs of victims. A stark reminder that there are thousands of troubled victims who seek truth and deserve justice in this most recent case of public inquiry is necessary due to public interest issues which were highlighted by the Supreme Court. As well as stepping up urgently to address its feeling of yesterday, feelings of yesterday, the UK Government must now act to honour the commitments made in the Stormont House Agreement to implement a comprehensive process dealing with the past in Northern Ireland, a process through which most legacy issues could be addressed. This remains the most viable and achievable option for victims, Mr Speaker, who are waiting and especially for those for whom time is running out. Thank you. And I call Jerry Carroll. Mr. Speaker, the decision to not grant a, a public inquiry in the killing of Pat Finucane is a shameful and despicable decision. Uh, the Finucane family have already waited for uh, far too long for truth, and this decision will only prolong their struggle and their pain. And the evidence regarding the murder of Pat Finucane points to state murder and an appalling level of collusion at the very heart of the British establishment. And this calculated move to block an inquiry begs the question how far are they willing to go to cover up uh, that collusion and state murder carried out with impunity. We should not be surprised, though, by this callous move. The British Empire was one where the sun never set and the blood never dried. And today, the British government continues to try to cover up its crimes in Ireland and in the North, perhaps because the same establishment continues to collude and murder in other parts of the world. For over 30 years, Mr. Speaker, British governments have dragged their feet and tried to cover up the collusion at the heart uh, of this case. But it, this is the ultimate insult to Pat Finucane's family and the other victims of collusion. And I'll add, uh, former Prime Minister David Cameron effectively uh, confirmed that a collusion took place in this case as well. Uh, we do need more than polite words as well, Mr. Speaker, from the Irish government, and I'm calling directly on the Taoiseach, Michael Martin, to take a, a stand against this outrageous uh, decision. Because this refusal 
by Johnson and the Tories should not be accepted. Just as they try to stop justice for the Bloody Sunday victims, they are trying to stop justice for Pat and his family. And just as they fail then, they will fail here uh, again. So we have to send our solidarity to the Finucane family, to their campaigns and the campaign of all victims of, of violence and state violence. And it is in our interest to stand with them today for as long as their fight goes on. And some have said in, in the last 24 hours, Mr Speaker, what about other victims? Um, indeed. But as if shutting the door to the killing of a human rights solicitor and denying proper answers to what happened will do anything for any other victim of the state, of state agents or paramilitaries. And it is a real shame, Mr Speaker, that some in this House are willing to defend the horrible record of the British government in this regard, but hardly surprising. Thank you. And there are no other members indicating to speak on this matter. That concludes the discussion on the matter of the day. And, uh, I have received notice from the Minister of Finance that he wishes to make a statement. Before I